In this video, we're going to discuss how to compute the corporation's basis in the assets received in a Section 351 transaction when the built-in loss limitation applies. So Section 362E of the U.S. Tax Code provides a built-in loss limitation that basically says when you have a Section 351 transaction, you look at all the properties that are being transferred to the corporation, right? So the properties are going to the corporation and this uh, tax-deferred transaction and basically you look at the aggregate adjusted basis so by aggregate I mean each property being transferred to the corporation you're gonna add up the adjusted basis of each property and then you're gonna add up the fair market values of each property and if the adjusted basis exceeds the fair market value then by the amount that they're they're different right if it, let's say exceeds it by $25 then you're gonna have a built-in loss limitation of $25 that's gonna need to be allocated in order to reduce some of the basis of the property that the corporation is receiving I know it's incredibly complicated let me work through an example it'll make it a little bit easier for you for you to understand so let's say that you own the the following three types of property you own a ferris wheel and you also own a set of go-karts uh, go-karts those little cars you drive around in they bump into each other and you also own a roller coaster so you own these three assets and the cost or we'll just assume in this case the adjusted basis and the cost we're just going to assume they're the same thing in this example for each asset, so you got the Ferris wheel is, is 100000 but then the fair market value of the Ferris wheel is 975000 and, and what does that mean and why is that relevant? Well, that means that we're going to have a built-in gain. So we're going to have a built-in gain on this Ferris wheel of $875,000. I'm going to explain why this is all relevant in a moment. So the go-karts, the adjusted basis in the go-karts is 700000 but the fair market value is 200,000. So we're going to say that there's a built-in loss. Call that a built-in loss. I'm just going to put loss here of 500,000. That does not mean you're going to recognize a loss on the transfer. Just just hold off. So let me, let me actually make that clear. We'll put here built-in loss. This does not mean we're recognizing loss. It's it's a built-in loss. This is a tax-free transfer because we're transferring property in exchange for stock. And so we're going to say we're, we're forming a corporation called Seven Flags Amusement Park. And we're going to transfer all these assets, the, the Ferris wheel, the go-karts, the roller coaster, to the corporation, to the Seven Flags in exchange for 100 shares. So I should have made that clear. So this is, is a Section 351 transaction. We're just calculating the built-in gain or loss of the assets. Okay. So the roller coaster, the adjusted basis is 900000 and the fair market value is 400,000. So we say there's a built-in loss of 500,000. And a way to think about this idea of a built-in loss, let's say there hadn't been a Section 351 transaction and you had just sold these assets, what would have happened? Well, if you had sold the roller coaster, you would add a $500,000 loss, but now you're transferring this roller coaster to the corporation to the seven flags in a in a this section 351 transaction so you're not recognizing any gain or loss right now but there's a built-in loss that that we're going to try and preserve so but there's going to be some limitations and we're, we're going to talk about all that so for the time being 875,000 built-in gain on the ferris wheel 500,000 built-in loss on the go-karts and 500,000 built-in loss on the roller coaster so what we're going to do is we're going to add up we're going to add up the built-in losses, and they, they add up, we're just there's two of them, so they add up to a million dollars, the built-in losses, and then we add up the built-in gains, which is 875, and so that means the net amount, the net amount is that we have a built, net built-in loss of 125,000. So the built-in gains offset the built-in losses and that's going to become important in terms of tax strategy now another way you could have calculated this if you want is you actually could have added up the adjusted basis for each property so what would that be 800 1.7 million and then you could add up the fair market values of each property and then just take the adjusted basis the aggregate minus the aggregate fair market values uh, and that'll get you to the same place where, where you have this $125,000 uh, of built-in losses that that we need to it's going to apply with this limitation right so if we didn't if, if this number was zero or if it was something positive 
where we actually had net built-in gain, then the built-in loss limitation, the section 362E thing that we're going to talk about, doesn't even apply. So it only applies when in the aggregate you have a built-in loss, so this 125000 So now let me explain. Let's go back to how we just, in general, calculate a corporation's basis. So we talked about, and if you haven't, we can watch a previous video if you haven't seen this yet, but when you're calculating the corporation's bas basis and the assets that are received, you're going to take the transferor's basis and the property transferred. Uh, so for the Ferris wheel, that was 100000 And then let's go back, see, so we had 100000 for the Ferris wheel, 700000 for the go-karts, and 900000 for the roller coaster. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to take the, that, think of that as a carryover basis, but now we're going to say, we're going to add any gain recognized. There, there's no gain recognized in this situation. I just made it simple so we didn't have to deal with that. But now, what we're going to have is we're going to have to subtract something, a reduction for lost property. We're actually going to be re reducing the basis in the corporation's assets, right? So here, here's how that works. You say, well, okay. We just figured out that it's 125,000. This is the amount that is going to have, this is the aggregate amount that we're gonna to have to reduce uh, the, the basis of these assets. Now, the Ferris wheel, it doesn't even apply because the Ferris wheel did not have a built-in built loss. So for the Ferris wheel, it's just gonna be zero dollars. So now the question is here, for the go-karts and the roller coaster, how do we figure out how much of this 125,000 that each of them gets? And so what we're going to do is we're basically going to do it based on their respective uh, built-in losses. So the, the go-karts had 500,000 out of a million, right? So you could take, I'm running out of space here, but say 500,000 divided by 1 million. So it's basically saying uh, we're going we're gonna to take, there's a million in built-in losses and go-karts had 500,000 of it. So we're going to say that, that we're going to multiply that by the 125,000 that needs to be allocated. So this is 125,000. So we're not, remember, we're not allocating the whole million of built-in losses because 875,000 was offset by the built-in gains from the Ferris wheel. So we just have to allocate the 125, but we're using the 500, the actual built-in loss from the go-kart to figure out the ratable share, right? It's based on the ratable share. And so basically, if you think about it, Go-karts have 50% of the built-in losses and roller coaster have 50%. So we're basically taking 50%. So that's going to be 62,500. That's basically going to say, look, for each the go-karts and the roller coaster, they're each going to have a basis reduction of 625, which if we add them both together is 125,000. So, that we're just going to reduce the basis by 625. We're gonna we're gonna subtract sixty two five for each of these properties. And again, the Ferris wheel we don't re reduce anything because the Ferris wheel they they had no built in loss at all. So now the transferee corporation's basis again we're looking at the basis to seven flags, the basis in the properties received. So for the Ferris wheel, it's going to be a hundred thousand because this basis limitation didn't apply. Uh, but for the go karts, it's going to be six thirty seven five hundred. So that is 700,000 minus the 62.5. By the way, I put the 62.5 in parentheses just to indicate it's, be, it's being subtracted. And so for the roller coaster, uh, you're going to have a basis of 837,500. Well, the reason for this section 362E is it basically the, the the tax code is trying to prevent uh, corp you transferring lost uh, property uh, to a corporation and doubling up on losses because you sell your stock and you get a loss. And, and basically then the corporation sells a property and there's a loss. So we want to prevent doubling up, doubling up of losses. So they, they don't want you doubling losses. Now, there is an exception. There is an exception where the corporation can say, well, look, we don't want to reduce, uh, take these basis reductions of 62.5 for each asset, but the corporation and the shareholder, which in this case would be you, you're the transferor, would have to agree. So let's say you agreed and you said, well, you know what? I will take this 125,000, which again is just the two 62.5s added together. I'll take that 125,000 as a basis reduction to my shares, right? Because you're re you're receiving 100 shares. You're receiving all 100 shares of the new corporation that you form. So you could say, I will reduce my basis 
uh, by 125,000. So to the extent that the shareholder can reduce his or her basis and is willing to do so, and the corporation wants to go along with it, then you could say, okay, we're not going to have this, just the shareholder is going to re reduce their basis. Now, a couple things to think about in terms of strategy. Obviously, it's not a good thing, for at least in the corporation's perspective, of, of losing basis. And so what you notice, uh, hopefully, is that by transferring also property, so when you transfer property with a built-in loss, like we did here, but if you also transfer property with built-in gain, it can offset the built-in losses, right? So if this built-in gain, for example, had been a million, then even though there would have been two assets with $500,000 built-in losses, it would have netted to zero, and there would have been no basis reduction at all. So if you can transfer as much property with, with built-in gains to offset, if you can you can offset it, then it's good tax strategy in terms of not losing that basis when, when you transfer the property to the corporation because the basis kind of disappears. Um, and then another thing to think about is if you don't have that available, you don't have any problem, uh, properties with built-in gains, another thing you could do is just instead of transferring uh, property to the corporation, you could just you know sell the property, uh, get cash, recognize the loss, and, and, and then contribute cash or something like that. And, and so there are a number of ways to think about because you really, the corporation doesn't want to be just losing basis because that disappears forever.